On the local scene today, we learn about the state-of-the-art hydroponic system at Three Hearts Farm and talk about upcoming things to do in our South Shore towns. I'm Elizabeth. Let's get started. Set in the rural backdrop of South Plymouth sits Three Hearts Farm, a nonprofit agricultural initiative that provides a safe, peaceful space for veterans to relax and de-stress. Also located at Three Hearts is something you don't see at other farms, a large trailer that holds an advanced hydroponic system which produces fresh produce for sale in the community. Diane Hart, the farm's primary grower, gave us a tour of this unique and sustainable process. Hi, I'm Diane Hart, and I'm the main grower here at Three Hearts Farm. This is a hydroponic uh, growing facility where we grow mainly uh, lettuce and greens and some edible flowers. This is where it all starts. We have um, grow plugs right here that we put in these little cylinders and we take pelleted seeds with a tweezer and put them in every single hole. There are 200 here and 200 here. So that's the beginning. We bring them over here to the nursery and cover them up with a dome and they stay here and when they all sprout, we take the dome off and they start to grow. This is um, Thai basil that we have here, and a starstruck mix, and some different um, seedlings. They stay here for three weeks in the nursery, and when three weeks is over, they're ready to be transplanted. So I'll take you down here and show you some transplants. Here we have some Genovese basil, and these are um, Swiss chard that we planted. These are also uh, seedlings. This is arugula and some other yummy lettuce. These are pretty much all ready, will be ready to harvest in about two weeks. So they stay in the nursery three weeks and they stay in the cultivation tank for four weeks. And then we harvest and it, we're ready to pick and bring them to you. So we'll move over and I'll show you some of the pretty unique um, crops that we're growing here. If you notice, everything is in a different stage of growing, and that's because uh, we stagger our growing so that we, every single week we transplant, we, um, sorry, we harvest two different kinds, or three different kinds of lettuces for our mixed bags. So, so many people are always asking for um, Swiss chard, and so on the other side we have transplants here we have um, some plants that are ready to harvest. And this is called Bright Lights Swiss Chard. And it's so pretty. So down here we have some oak leaf lettuce, um, not ready again for about two weeks. And as I said, we stagger them. So down here are my favorite types of bib lettuce. Aren't they pretty? I turned into a lettuce geek, but I think they're so pretty. They're uh, ready to harvest next week, so this will be part of our next wheat harvest, a red and green bed. So we'll move over. If you, um, oh, I forgot to tell you about the lights. Um, so this is a double panel of lights, LED lights, and there are four sets of lights, one on the outside of each part of the grow facility and a double one here and you'll be able to see them when we move down. So there are panels of lights, one down here, one on the left, and two in the middle, which leaves us four grow panels. I move these over to a certain point at the end of the day before we turn the lights on. So, okay, let's take a look at this kale. This is uh, some baby kale, which I come down and harvest. I've also already harvested. I think I cut these a little too short, but they're coming back. And uh, 
more seedlings down here. This is a cute little crop called Tendida, and it's really a hardy romaine. In case you like to use this as a wrap or um, even as a decoration, they're pretty nice. Our final grow wall. Host this week's harvest. So these are grow panels and they contain one, two, three, four, five channels. Each channel has two pieces of foam rubber with a white felt strip in between. We take the seedlings and put them in, in between the two pieces of foam and make contact with the felt. Once they make contact and we turn the water on, there's a drip emitter at the top of each one of these. I'll show you. You can see the drip emitters. And they'll, when we turn everything on, the drip, they'll drip behind this each channel and make contact with felt, which hold the seedlings. So that's how they all grow. This is ready to, um, this is called a starstruck mix. This is so pretty. I love the greens in it, the different color and the textures. This is my favorite called pomegranate crunch. It's a, a nice red um, romaine. Again, if you like to have, have your lunch in wraps, this is perfect. These are called nasturtiums, which if they're um, edible flowers. I did get a couple of flowers from them, but not many. But if you've ever t wanted to taste something um, that is sweet at the beginning, finishing up with a very peppery taste, come and taste some of these leaves because that's what this does. It's really, really good. It's better than arugula. This is uh, Thai basil, which is um, also, if you've ever had any um, Thai food, um, this is a really, unique taste to Thai food. Um, it, to me, it tastes like black licorice. And finally, we have more Thai basil that we just transplanted this week. So you can see how they fit in between each one of these little uh, pieces of foam. And down here, we have radishes. These are kind of cool. They grow out and they're called uh, breakfast radishes. They're finger radishes, so they're gonna be about as long as my finger. The other thing I wanted to tell you about how plants grow in here is this is our CO2 duct. And what we do is pump in CO2 into this room so that our plants can grow bigger. So if you remember back to your biology class or your science class, um, plants breathe in CO2 and breathe out oxygen in order for photosynthesis to take place. And um, so yeah, I've loved working here. I volunteer here. I wouldn't have it any other way. This is the best retirement place I could, I could ever spend my time. And I have lots of help too. Three Hearts Farm is located at 232 Beaver Dam Road and opens to the public at 10 a.m. Mondays through Saturdays. Intimacy and commitment are the banners of love, but beyond that, how each of us feels about and when in love is as varied and unique as each individual. On Sunday, January 22nd, join local authors Randy Ross, Jason M. Rubin, and Judah LeBlanc with special guest author Stephanie Chereau for the Duxbury Free Library Sunday Arts and Culture Series program, Love in All Its Forms, a Valentine's reading and performance. This two-hour program will feature the four authors reading original works inspired by all expressions of love from the perspective of all orientations, ages, and attitudes. Held in the Merry Room, the program begins at 2 p.m. Visit the library's website to register. New England winter weather's unpredictability can make getting out and about safely difficult for some of our seniors, but curling up with a good book is one of the cozy pleasures of cold days. 
To help keep connected to the latest Goodreads, the Pembroke Public Library and Council on Aging have partnered to help keep seniors supplied in a new program called Words on Wheels. If you can't make it to the library, let the library come to you in the form of COA drivers who will deliver books selected by library staff to you in your home. The application for Words on Wheels is available online at the library or at the COA desk. Complete and submit it to the Pembroke Public Library and look forward to the best cold month pastime in your most comfortable chair. Japanese calligraphy, also known as Shodo, meaning the way of writing, was first brought to Japan by China in the 6th century. On January 29th from 2 to 3 p.m., join calligraphy instructor Surup Sari at the Duxbury Free Library for a class on this Japanese art and writing form. You'll learn the basics of this Japanese writing system and then be able to practice pen calligraphy yourself. Surup Sari will be live streamed via Zoom, but this is an in-person event. Register online through the library's website. For the perfect musical martini and symphony swagger, think Bond, James Bond. The Plymouth Philharmonic Orchestra will bring it all from Skyfall to Thunderball for your eyes only at their January 28th and 29th concerts, Shaken, Not Stirred, the music of James Bond. Featuring the Phil, along with members of the Jeans and Classics Band, you'll be transported through 60 plus years of music from 007's 27 films. Visit PlymouthPhil.org to get your tickets. Nobody does it better. High prices at the grocery store can make food shopping a stressful experience, especially for seniors on a tight budget. If you could use some extra groceries to help get through the week, the Kingston Senior Center offers a bag-and-go grocery pickup every Wednesday. It's simple to participate. Just come to the Senior Center between 11 a.m. and noon on Wednesdays and pull up to the semicircle. A staff member will come out to greet you for a no-contact grocery pickup. For more information on this service, contact the Senior Center at 781-585-0511. The Plymouth Family Resource Center provides community-based support groups, education, and more for families with children. On Friday, February 10th, and every second Friday of the month throughout the year, you can visit their free family market between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. in Plymouth. This free market features items families need most, including baby diapers and wipes, pet supplies, food, and more. Residents from neighboring towns are welcome. Find out more about the free family market and other support offered by the Plymouth Family Resource Center on their website, PlymouthFamilyRC.org. Have you been meaning to join a book club but just don't have time in your schedule to commit to 300 pages or more? The Short Story Club at the Duxbury Free Library may be for you. Short story enthusiasts ages 18 and up are welcome on the last Wednesday of every month at 6 p.m. to read and discuss shorts about all walks and circumstances of life. This month's reading is With the Beatles by Haruki Murakami. Download the complete 2023 reading list on the library's website. For more information, message Elizabeth at eellis at ocln.org. Filing taxes can be expensive, confusing, and frustrating. To help alleviate the expense and some of the feelings, the United Way offers the My Free Taxes program. This is in partnership with the IRS's Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. Find out more at MyFreeTaxes.com. New Year, new resolutions, and if fitness is on your list, the Pembroke Council on Aging is adding some motivation by offering their fitness classes free of charge until March. Weekly classes include Zumba, Tai Chi, chair aerobics, and more. There's no need to sign up, just show up. Find out more at 781-294-8220. Scallywags aged five and up are invited to see if it's the pirate life for them at Plymouth Public Library's Pirate Party. On February 4th from 2 to 3.30 p.m., join in for an afternoon of fun with pirate-themed crafts, games, and more. 
Pirate attire is encouraged, but not necessary. Register online at the library's website. On December 28, 1772, at town meeting at the First Church of Pembroke, five men signed a petition known as the Pembroke Resolves, an aggressive petition addressing the British treatment of the colonies. The resolves were historic as the first public mention of a potential separation from England. On January 8th of this year, the Pembroke Historical Society celebrated the Pembroke Resolves 250th anniversary at the First Church in Pembroke. Along with the historical reenactment of the signing, the history and reading of the Ten Resolves were presented to those in attendance. Local residents portrayed the original signers. This event was covered by PAC TV and will be aired on our community channel later in January. Find air dates at pactv.org slash TV schedules. And that's what's good and good to know on the local scene this week. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. We are grateful for your attention. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe to The Local Scene here and share everywhere. Thank you, friends.